Welcome to the course, Basics Digital Storytelling. Okay, so first we will address actually texturing. Uh, so let's say that you have an image, in this case, Saraka Island, uh, and this is just took from Google Earth. So just took a screenshot and um, in Photoshop, just cut out, um, I took out the C, so it's kind of white. Then in Photoshop, what you can do, you can turn it into grayscale. So uh, we'll be sampling this image also. So I want to create a texture in Rhino using vector graphics, so lines and circle shapes. But I want to um, uh, I, I want to use some information from the image, and I want to use basically just the brightness of the image. Or so in that sense, the color is not important, but the brightness is important. Or so kind of dark areas and lighter. Uh, so that's why I kind of turned this into black and white. It's not really necessary for the whole process. You can kind of skip this step as well, but um, I also, well, I think it's just a bit easier than to see which information that we actually use from the image. Okay, so this is the information that we use, it's just the brightness. Um, and um, yeah, we will be basically reading the brightness of these pixels. And also in Photoshop, I kind of made it, made it a little bit more, um, I made it a little bit more, actually open Photoshop as a talk. Um, I added contrast or so I kind of adjusted the levels uh, so that they get the higher contrast between pixels. And in the end, I actually uh, inverted the image. So uh, what was black becomes white and what was white becomes black. And I'll actually show you now quickly in Photoshop how you can do this, because I think it's sort of only fair to show you how to do this. Uh, it's, it's, also, it's also kind of rather quick. So I'll just pull the Photoshop here on my screen. I hope you can see it. Uh, so it's just Photoshop. Again, in, there's another course in period four, I think, or three, forgot, um, Digital Storytelling Elective. Actually, it's period, it's period four, yeah. Um, Digital Storytelling Elective. And there we will actually work just in Photoshop. So if you're interested, you can kind of join that course. And, uh, but here, I just want to show you quickly. So you can just drag and drop, you take this image. Uh, of course, you should cut it out before, but I'm just, quickly going to do this you just drag and drop it in photoshop um, and with alt and mouse feel like can zoom in uh, and then we can do some adjustments like for example i can go to image mode grayscale so i just turn it into um, grayscale image and now i can go to image mode uh, image adjustments levels and there's a small window that pops out here now with this one this is a histogram of the image. So it basically just counts how many pixels are there of which color. So this is black area here, this is white, and I can move this around. Or so obviously there's like um, a lot of very white pixels and there's a lot of kind of gray area here, that's the island. So I can kind of adjust this a little bit if I move this guy here, this one maybe here, and then this, this is the middle. Uh, actually, it doesn't really look so amazing. But yeah, I can kind of basically get these levels. I can kind of increase a bit the uh, contrast. Or so you can see this original, this a bit increased contrast. Um, and then you can say, OK. And then uh, you can go to image adjustments, invert. So let's so just invert these images. Now, this is important. You will see later why, why we do this invert. And then if, you, um, if, this is, if the image is too large, you can also make it smaller, like image, image size. This is the number of pixels, and you can just put it to you know 10%, and then it's just a smaller image. If you want to test things out, first on a smaller image, then you can use later a larger one so that everything is kind of a bit faster in Grasshopper. Okay, so you can do all these adjustments and then save that image, but I actually did it already before, so I'll not save it. Uh, but yeah, the image in the end looks like this, so it's a bit approximate, but um, <clears throat> but um, it's gonna be good for what we need to use it for so let's save it and i'll take out photoshop so i actually already have it here saved from just did an example before okay now let's see how we can work with it in grass uh, in rhino grasshopper so here we work just in the top view because that's our drawing view uh, in options we just remove the grid here um so origin is I can just actually put point type in zero and it's my kind of origin now uh, grasshopper so you turn on this grasshopper plugin by just typing in grasshopper 
In Rhino 7, Grasshopper is already integrated in, so it comes with, um, with Rhino, so you don't need to install it separately. That's new from Rhino 7. And um, yeah, let's, let's actually sample the image. So again, there's, there are tons of these, um, uh, there are tons of these uh, components here, um, so which you can kind of also play around with. There's also like literally 1,000 more of these components. But we will use a component called image sampler. It's under here, parameters, input, image sampler. And you just kind of drop it somewhere. This is that's on the canvas. And uh, we have to load the image. Uh, so we go right click, image. And then, um, so once again, right click and then uh, you choose image here. Uh, you choose this, uh, well, you can choose any of these, but we'll just choose this one, um, the kind of scaled down version that is inverted. Press OK. It looks a bit weird here, but this doesn't really matter. Um, this doesn't really matter. So we will just do some adjustments now. So if you double click on this component, you can adjust certain things. So you can actually first click on a Mona Lisa here. So we, <clears throat> we're gonna say, <clears throat> we sample a domain, the X direction 287, Y, y domain, so height of the image 118. That, those are, that's actually the resolution of our, of our image. So we'll basically sample every pixel. You can do this, you can subsample, so you can kind of, you don't need to take all the points, you can take some of them, you can use a larger image, but we just do it like this now because it's just quicker. We sample basically every pixel from the image. Now this is a lot of pixels. There's gonna be a lot of elements still because you multiply these two numbers that's how many elements you'll have. Um, and here we choose channel, we choose uh, color brightness or so. Um, we just worry about black and white. This will and also give us um, the brightness value of the pixel. Um, so not, no color, just brightness. Okay, we press okay, and now kind of everything, everything works, but nothing is really happening. I'm actually just save this as a Haraka Island sampling. Just save it uh, so you have it for later. Haraka Island sampling. Yeah, last time when I wanted to show it to you, somehow I used the image that was too large and everything was super slow. So I decided to completely rebuild this example. So um, just to keep it simple. Okay, so sampling is happening here, but uh, we have to basically pass points. Or so we have to pass points to this image or to this component here on the left. It's like a function. Or so we have to add a um, have to add points here, and then these points in Rhino. That's kind of where for every point. Uh, the image will be sort of, for every point we will get uh, a pixel value on that position in the image. So somehow the coordinates in Rhino will be matched to um, pixels on the image bar. So, um, so here we have to put in a grid. So we create, have to create this grid of points. So we go here under vector, grid, and we choose um, to the grid with square cell. Yeah, that's what we need, so square grid. And um, this is the base plane, that's fine, that's the origin. Then we have size of grid cells one, this is also fine. Uh, and then we have X, so number in X and Y direction. And um, here we'll just put in a slider. So we can write, for example, 1000 here. So I double click on a canvas, I'll write 1000. And uh, now I can kind of choose the number here. And if I plug this in here, I can also copy paste this slider and plug in into the Y. Now I get this, this many points, or so I get um, actually quite a lot of points now. Um, 514 by 514, and I can change this or so. Actually, I want to change it so it's exactly the size of the image or so. Uh, 287, so this 287, and um, this is 118. So again, you can kind of change, you can adjust these numbers a little bit, uh, but um, wait, I did something wrong. Two, eight, ah, uh -huh, no, it's actually correct. The uh, image is very long, yeah, correct, okay. Okay, so that's our grid. And, um, but we are not really interested in the grid itself, we're interested more like in the points or so we will later this preview this components. So I go right click, you can kind of click here on preview or you can press control Q and kind of just remove the component. So it's still working, but you don't see it. So we'll do that later. And uh, here, over here, 
the 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 points at grid corners come out or right? so these points that's actually what we want to feed into this component here so it comes out here now for every of these point that is on this grid corner um, one so a, a pixel of a certain value or a certain value will be assigned to it and let's actually see how that looks like so the value should come out on this side and uh, yeah, it's it's like a very long list, and you can see that some of them are zero. That's kind of where the water is because the water we made black, and then the other ones are some number to one. Or so uh, one is actually white, one is white, and everything that we get numbers from zero to one, so some value between, and that's basically our brightness value. So one is white, and zero is black, um, and you don't really need to worry about how this is formatted. So that just has to do a little bit with how Grasshopper handles data, but it's just a very big list, a very long list. And, uh, and we can use this to place elements. Or So let's see how we do that. So now I want to, at each of these corners, I want to place an element. And let's say we put circles, because maybe my pattern will be created from circles. You can choose whatever you want. It can be line, um, yeah, whatever you want. So we will just use circles now. So I want to create a circle. So I can go here under curve, uh, primitive, and we have to choose some way to construct a circle. And maybe the simplest way is they create a circle defined by base plane and radius. Are. So I click here and I need a point and then I need the radius. And let me just save this. I hope this will not crash now. Um, so, so what are my actual points? Or so the center point will be the same points come from here or so the these corner points those are the center points of my circle so i can just plug in that here under p and actually you can already see that i get circles or so i can just preview this guy and there's just a lot of them and they overlap because this radius is now set to one so it's always the same radius for every circle they kind of overlap it's also kind of a nice pattern but this is not exactly what we want we want the radius to be somehow dependent on the brightness of the pixel and if you want to do it just very straightforward we just basically take whatever comes out from here and we plug it into radius and you kind of already get it or so we already get the results and you can see now the the water so the circles that fall into water they are black and their radius is very small it's basically zero it might not even even be there i'm not sure um, everything else in between grayscale values, they, they are just larger. So um, yeah, the, the circles are just larger, but the maximum size is one because white is one. So the maximum circle is actually size one. And this, is, this already basically creates our image. So somehow in the circles, um, I mean, here we kind of have a little bit of an inverted uh, situation. Yeah. No, actually, it's kind of correct. Yeah, it's uh, it's correct. Yeah, yeah. It's so it basically the reason I use the inverted image in um, is because we we wanted our image to look a little bit like this. Or so um, this is dark, and uh, so this shadow of the building is dark. And here the circles are large and they kind of overlap, so they create this a bit darker surface. Um, uh, conversely, water is white in this case, so circles the ray die are kind of very small so they kind of disappear they just see the background here um okay and now let's just sort of let's not extend this example too long but let's just see how we can just quickly just adjust these a little bit so if you say ah, oh, this is great but then i really want this pattern i want to somehow adjust this a little bit then just means that this ray die that come out here those are some numbers we need to we need to modify them or they need to be scaled more by some number. So there's a component called multiplication. So we can go ahead and map. Um, actually, uh, yeah, math operators, very simple message. Um, and we just say multi multiplication. So we give A and B numbers and they're just multiplied. So that's actually a cool thing about Grasshopper is Grasshopper, um, once when you define something that works on a single element, you can also define it to work on a whole list. So then if I pass a list to a component, this component will just 
apply this to every element in that list or so i can kind of i can interchange um, sort of single elements and lists of elements so grasshoppers sort of interpret what i want to do and this is sort of done a little bit consistently so as uh, sometimes i don't really have to worry about how many elements are there in a list i just worry about is it possible to perform an operation on it and in this case this should be possible so i can for example put in a slider maybe goes actually want to scale this down so maybe it puts two I put one here uh, slider type floating point so i want to have a like, scale down so I'll go from one to zero and uh, set the first to one so that's the I multiply that number with all the numbers that come out from here and then that's what i feed into the radii or radius okay and this is basically it says b but i can just call it scale here so right click here and just type in scale so this is some kind of scale um second delete okay and um i can zoom into this slider here and now if I change this number, these all of these circles, you can see they're kind of become smaller and bigger. I mean, I can go also, of course, beyond one. Let's actually put here values go to maximum, for example, two. Okay, commit changes. So I can go even further. I can go kind of to two. I can go, of course, as big as I want. But these now overlap too much. It's maybe not so nice. I can go a little bit lower. And then I can just choose some number that is sort of nice. Um, so I can basically fine tune a little bit this texture and I can then do other things or I can, I can um, filter some of these circles out. So I can say if you're smaller than a certain number, then you're just not there, I just delete it. Or if you're bigger than a certain number, I can also do it. So there are different ways to filter out these values. But basically, if you have an image of a texture that you like, and if you can, well, here we recreated it's just circles. So it's, you know, some way of recreating a texture um so if i can do that then i can basically just go from a picture directly to to vector graphics or so let's put here 0 0.5 okay and um and yeah and then this example is done let me just show you kind of quickly how, what you can do with it um so hopefully this will work i didn't test it but it's always a bit of an issue so I can, for example, export this, or I can go here under circles, right click, bake. I can just say, just yeah, bake everything. Now I can, um, all these objects are now in Rhino, or they're just circles. And, uh, and I can just work, work with them, or I can take a circle, I can just kind of move it, move it around. There's still this grasshopper preview in the, in the background, but basically now these circles are selectable or so I can just select them, delete them or do whatever I want with them or. So um, but let's say I want to export this. So I can just say file save as so I can just save the whole file into uh, just say some locally uh, tutorials modeling and here I'll just call it Haraka Island and I'll just put zero one and we want to import, import, it, uh, import it now in, uh, for example, Il Illustrator. So we need some interchangeable, interchangeable format. So Rhino is not that, but uh, DXF is. So if I choose here AutoCAD Drawing Exchange DXF, I can just save it. Uh, there's some issues with potentially circles will not look that good. So we might have to change some of these things here, but um, natural. I'll just try, I'll try to use this setting here. Uh, let's just use default, let's see how it looks like. It could be that you might get some bit of a ugly preview in Illustrator uh, because, yeah, just because this exchange works, but uh, let's try it. So now I'll just open Illustrator. So this comes with a sort of this Adobe Creative Cloud package. So if you have Photoshop, you usually have Illustrator. I suggest Illustrator as well as InDesign. So I just suggest for you to install or work with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and then if you work with videos, Adobe Premiere is great. Um, Acrobat you anyways probably have, and Bridge is also cool uh, because of you can do some batch operations on documents. So those are just the ones that I use uh, like really regularly. Okay, 
So now my Illustrator is here. Uh, my DXF file is here. So it's just a, it's a vector drawing. And I should be able to just plug in or just import it here. Actually, let's do it differently. Let's, uh, let's go file, new. So let's choose a size, maybe some A3. So print uh, presets, A3, um, landscape, create. So just create a paper now first. And uh, now I should be able to import it, but let me see how that works right here. Scale to fit artboard, okay. Now it's actually going to open another file, which is A3, but see how these circles look like. Okay, they look okay. Um, sometimes if you have a lot of them, they might look a bit ugly, uh, like not really like circles. Okay, and now you can kind of, well, let's see how we do it. I want to copy it in the other file for reasons that I will not explain now. Copy uh, here, edit, paste in place. Um, Illustrator is just slower in everything. So if you have a lot of elements, everything is just working slower. Let's scale this immediately, transform, uh, scale um, maybe 80%. So it fits nicely on paper. Okay. Now let's just start adjusting. So this one I can delete. Um, let's put some, let's put some nice, um, let's put some nice, so, 0 0.1, this is the thickness. And uh, yeah, I mean, this already kind of looks nice, but let's say we want to color every circle. I think it should be possible by going here. See what happens if I put black. Okay. It kind of made every circle black. So that's a little bit the effect that we wanted. This is basically, this is called um, printing, this is called um half tone pattern so it's kind of a mix a little bit this sort of a yeah printing okay, actually i just realized maybe select here 0.05 okay again this is not really part of your assignment but uh, actually let's put here the okay i have a better idea 0 0.1 and then the boundary will be white because then some of the very small ones will just completely dis disappear. Okay, I think it makes it kind of a little bit crisper. Uh, okay, and then the ones that are here very small, they kind of disappear. Okay, and now this you can basically save into, into PDF. So file, save as, um, PDF, just find it here, tutorials, modeling, and I'll just copy the name here. Haraka Island sampling modeling. Mm. Yeah, okay, save, save. And uh, just turn this off. Okay, so now this is a PDF. Let's see how big it is four megabytes and not so big. And uh, yeah, okay, so this is just, uh, this is basically. You could, yeah, this is just a PDF drawing, so you can just kind of print this. Of course, it's not really the workflow that we use for this assignment. You, you should just, um, so we, you don't work with the solid hatches, you don't need to use Illustrator. Uh, but I just want to show you kind of if you want to quickly produce some nice patterns and use it as a, you know, as a graphic somewhere, this is how you can sort of do it really quickly. Uh, okay, so that's, that's one way of doing it, or one way of handling these. Um, uh, hatches. So let's save this and um, let's actually, let's delete everything. I'll show you a few other tricks. So actually this one I'll turn off. Okay, now I have a few other things to show you. Um, let's say you don't want to work with circles, but you have some hatch that, um, yeah, let's say you have some hatch that, let's say you have some pattern that you want to kind of disperse in a random way around. So here we had circles, but uh, maybe you want to have something like, let's say it looks like grass. Uh, so there are different ways that you can arrange, let's say random elements <clears throat> in, using grasshopper, it's really quick. So if you go here under um, vector, 
grid, uh, you can choose. So there's, for example, an option called populate 2D. And this basically what this does, you can input a size of a bounding box and it will create, it will kind of, it will, um, it will arrange random points in this in this rectangle. And this is already fine, but I want to show you an example where you can define the boundary for yourself. So we don't have a rectangle. Let's say you have some uh, boundary that you want to populate. So we don't use this function. We use um, here under again, vector grid popular geometry. So popular geometry, we need to give it some geometry. So I'll just draw an irregular shape a little bit something like this, and maybe this is your pond or uh, yeah, whatever, like a mm, park area. And in Grasshopper, you can input this curve in by double clicking here. You can say geometry or actually curve, I think either, either, either one works. So this is the black component. It's, it's like an input of a curve. Then you go right click, set one curve and you select the curve. Now I kind of, this component now references this curve in Rhino. And I can just plug it in or so I go here. The first input in this component here is called uh, geometry. So geometry to populate. And then it tells you here uh, what you need to use it for. And actually, if you just plug it in here, we don't get exactly the pro correct result because we only gave the curve. Uh, now we sort of populated just the boundary of the curve. Um, we just populated the boundary of the curve uh, uh, um, with these random points, which is not exactly what we want we want to actually have the whole surface or so but let's actually have both of these oh, actually ah, let's yeah so here i can call this uh boundary boundary so this we don't want but we can go here right click disconnect uh, this one here so we want to create a surface out of this so it's already going to be the second topic kind of 3d modeling in rhino basically i can select this curve and I can go here and there's an option called surface from planar curves. So when I click this, it will just create a surface for me. That sur surface is, uh, is a bit hard to see. If we go here in the shaded, you can see that this surface has a little bit of a color now. And actually in 3D, you could actually see this. So if I'm kind of here in 3D, which I will I can show you um, very soon, this is basically uh, just a surface in 3D. But we just here look at it from the top. You can even go here under properties and show ice surface size the curves. You can remove this and then don't even see this kind of a square. <clears throat> okay, so this is a surface. Now this is much better because here I can say, uh, you know, well, they're putting in some surface in Grasshopper. Uh, and here I can just call it um, ah, surface. Uh, right click, set one surface and just click in the middle. Now the surface is referenced. And you can just plug it into geometry. Now I got something what I want to do. So now I have um, I have the, um, I have my surface. Also now the points, random points are inside the surface. But we'll do another adjustment. Just a minute. I'll save this. Actually, copy objects randomly. I'll just re save this. Okay. Now, if I select the curve from outside, and I select one of these points and I try to move the point, you will see what happens is that the surface is not really following it. Also, I, I cannot really modify the surface anymore once when it's created. It's a bit annoying. Uh, let's say I want, to, I want to modify the surface after I kind of use it here in Grasshopper, but then I need to create in Grasshopper. Or so. so I go from a boundary, and if there's a function here in Rhino that draws a planar surface, Assumption is that there must be a very similar function here in Grasshopper that does exactly the same thing. So, um, you know, functions that I can use in Rhino are very often or basically 200% that they are kind of, uh, they are sort of copied so that, that there's a version in Grasshopper where I can use. There's actually even more functions in Grasshopper as well. Okay, so here I just have to find it, maybe curve, actually surface, um, freeform boundary surface create planar surfaces from a collection of boundary edge curves perfect that's exactly what we need so i put it in here uh, my boundary goes into edge and then this surface i can actually delete now i have my i have my surface that i created just in grasshopper 
So, but now if I select uh, ah, this surface uh, that I created before, I can just delete it because I don't need it. And now if I, if I modify the boundary of this curve, the surface will modify it. Or so I'm, because as soon as I modify the curve, this boundary will get recalculated or so it, it gets kind of recalculated um, as a modifying. So that's, that's one advantage of, um, of a parametric workflow. I don't, I don't need to redraw things over and over. If I define them through these components as a code, uh, then I, if I change anything there, uh, it will just recalculate everything that's sort of down this, down this curve, down this flow. Uh, so I don't need to redraw it like the a rhino is doing it for me, in this case, grasshopper. Okay, so now we have the surface, and now the surface comes out here and goes into geometry. And now I have something that is actually pretty useful because now I have my boundary here and I can just sort of change the size of it. You can see that the points then also change because they're just set uh, to some random random number here. There is a seed of the random system. And I can change also the number of points to add. So double click, right, 1000, for example, just slider, points go in here. And now I go from, I kind of change the number of points or so. Um, so that's then also a parameter in my, in my, um, in my kind of script code or so I can just say, I want a little bit more denser, a bit less dense and so on. Now, the position of these is completely random. Uh, so then there are different ways that this randomness can be defined. So, um, you know, I have different, there are many different types of sort of random distributions. And here we cannot really go into that, but basically sometimes you don't want to have this distribution. It's actually a uniform uh, distribution. So it has approximately similar density everywhere, but you can have different distributions. For example, you can say, I want to have more points along the edge and less in the middle, or, but this then requires a bit more, um, a bit more coding, but it's all possible or so. Um, okay, so just save this. And actually this one, I will also save. Um, I'm just, this the copy objects randomly. Say this is a Rhino file. Okay, I see that today we are all 36 people. So uh, yeah, very, very small, but it's fine. Uh, Rhino seven. Oh, uh, seven. And here I want to have just, Maybe this is, ah, somehow, okay, can I do it? Um, copy objects randomly, okay. Just a file that I have saved, so I have this curve saved. Okay, and now let's actually copy the objects. Or so let's say I want to draw an object that I want to copy on all of these points. And I can just draw it. It's best if I draw it as a, as a single object, maybe single line. That's just easiest, even though we can do it kind of from multiple lines. But let's say I draw something that looks a little bit like a grass blade, something like this. And yeah, I'm just kind of doing it in a way so that it's, uh, um, this is not maybe a best way to draw, but uh, I just want to prove my point. Okay. Okay, so this is a bit kind of, I say this is a grass plate that I want to copy all over here. Um, and then I scale it a bit. So I'll just do it down. Okay, and uh, this I can do, I can just kind of again put it in grasshopper. So double click here. Um, it can be the geometry or curve in this case. And here I can rename it as um, blade of grass. Uh, right click, set one curve, this one here. Okay, so now we have the blade of grass. And I want to also have some point that I copied from. So I'll just draw a manually point here. Um, sometimes it's not really necessary, but it's good to kind of see. So I will use this point as a reference. So I can also put this point in. Um, so some point inputs, and here I can just call it origin. So right click set one point set here perfect so i have a blade of grass and i have its sort of origin uh, 
and, um, and now I want to just do copy R. And the funny thing is that in Grasshopper, there's no option to copy, but there is, because somehow every time I modify geometry in Grasshopper, I already create a copy automatically. So the, the, object, the objects are just kind of copied as I go along. And because of that, I basically, my copy is just sort of a move command. So go here in the vector, actually transform Euclidean um, move. Move, okay, from move to plane. Okay, move. Move is basically um, just translates an object along a vector. Or so that's why I mentioned before when you start working with these uh, parametric tools, knowing a little bit of math, it goes a long way. So you have to just be comfortable with the concept of a vector. What is a vector? Uh, because these, these are just um, things that you use here, like directly, they're just directly applicable. So I have a geometry here that I pass. That's my blade of grass, goes in here. Now I need to give it a vector, translation vector. So where am I actually moving this object? And um, very roughly, I want to create a vector from this point to every other point that I have defined here. Or, so I want to actually create these vectors. And there will be as many vectors as there are points, because basically the object needs to move from here to every other point. And if I select now these also lines, I select them and write tier, you will see that they're all pointed or so they all kind of have direction. So I just want to kind of move basically, yeah, I want to create a vector that goes from this point to all the other points there um, in order to copy it or so that I'm giving. And you know, if, if I want to draw, if I want to do this in Rhino, I have to do the same thing. Look, I have to select the object, I have to say maybe copy or move. And then it tells me, okay, point to move from, from here. And then I have to give it an, another point. Or so I give you maybe this point here. Okay, so I move this object. Um, so basically I have to define two points and I do, when I do this, I just define the vector. Or, so here I can go, uh, again, define this vector in Grasshopper as well. So vector point, uh, actually vector here. Uh, <clears throat> so I can either use this vector from components or there's something called vector vector two points. Okay, create a vector between two points. Okay, that's what I was looking for. So the first point is my origin. And then the second point are actually all these points that come out from here. Or so all of these points, that's those are the destinations, those are those are the targets. Or, so I basically can plug this whole list into B here. And now I get a list of vectors. They'll look like funny. So I just like in a panel here, we'll see how it looks like. Um, they just all look like, um, yeah, they all just look like uh, just just vectors. So it's a tuple, so it's a kind of a small list of two values defines a two dimensional vector. Um, and and all of these, all of these vectors, they go into translation here. You know, but when I do that, I basically already did my, um, I did my job or so kind of, I just copy them all. Huh? So here I can now go right click, bake, um, group, yes. And here I can say select uh, last. All the elements are here. I can just move it up, yes, to zoom them. And in a very approximate way, I kind of already created, um, I created sort of some, some pattern. Huh? And uh, yeah, but I can kind of start to fine tune this. Or so I can go here. And maybe change the count. Again, this actually grass is not really that nice. So maybe I'll just rotate this a little bit. Um, rotate. So I go from here. Maybe it's rotate a little bit like this. Ah, okay, it's still still aligns. Okay, you can just leave it. Uh, but yeah, so in this way, I can sort of quickly quickly change scale. Maybe scale it even more. So I can kind of quickly sort of scale. Um, scale objects. Okay, it looks very regular because I have the same, I have somehow the same, um, the same object which is copied many, many times. And this gives it a very, very kind of artificial look or, but, um, but I can combine this. I can actually show you now how to combine it. I can be a little bit creative. And 
I can, for example, say, well, have some distribution here, right click, bake, group, okay. So in Rhino select last, I can just see how this, okay, I can go up, okay, here. Now let's change this a little bit. Let's kind of rotate it a little bit here, here, and scale it a little bit like this, okay. And now I want to change the number. I can also change the seed here. So look, there's a seed. Um, just type in one, doesn't matter. Slider type, or actually let's put here 100. So I can change the seed of the random system. Uh, at the beginning, it's set to one. So I can kind of choose which type of randomness I want to get. I kind of shuffle it a little bit. And um, I rotate it already, I scaled it. And then I can go a little bit less, or actually a little bit more, because we have maybe there are smaller ones that they should be maybe a bit more. Uh, right click, bake. Uh, group yes, okay, select last, and then I go again, up, up, up. okay, now I kind of overlaid, uh, let's do it maybe one more time, so rotate maybe in the other direction, like this, scale, uh, yeah, maybe let's go even a little bit smaller, great, and um, let's make them Let's make even more of them, so like this. And let's reshuffle everything. And then I go here, right click, bake, group, yes, okay. In Rhino, select last. And with this nudge command that I have, just go up. Okay, so, ah, well, of course, some of them now overlap. And, um, and yeah, let's actually do just one more time, so. Rotation and just a little bit here. Scale, let's just make it kind of a bit bigger now. But let's put very, very few elements or so um, count is maybe just 50 or something like that, or maybe 100. Okay. And uh, yeah, again, we can reshuffle the seed, try not to do the same, uh, use the same one that we used before. And again, right click, uh, bake, group, yes, okay. Select last, up, up, up. And okay, so, you know, it's, we are kind of, we are approaching a little bit there. Also, so it's somehow now, maybe the next step would be I could just select all these, copy, paste. I can shift them here and just actually save this. I'll save this one. Now, if, if I, if I want to, you know, now I would kind of maybe go up, actually ungroup all this, ungroup. I think I managed to ungroup all of them. Great, now I can kind of, um, there's these different selection tools, select, and then I can go with this, um, um, yeah, there's a way to select things by just circling them, but I don't really know how. Uh, e yeah, okay, there's a, ah, uh, here, I think loss of points or something like that. Okay, yeah, you can kind of use this weird lasso, select curves. Loss of points, I kind of see it because it's white. Okay, uh, well, or you can just kind of go like this, a little bit, uh, select the elements, um, kind of start sort of trimming them down a bit, uh, maybe here toward the middle. Again, this is a bit artificial, but it's basically uh, basically what we're doing is uh, instead of adding elements, we're kind of removing more. Um, so you can kind of choose a little bit what's sort of easiest for you. Is it better to add elements or is it better to actually remove them? Maybe here between these two patches, there's a bit of a empty spot. And um, yeah, okay. So if you're a little bit creative, and a little bit more careful, more, more careful than me, maybe. Uh, and of course, ideally, these blades of grass should also be a bit different geometry. Or so you can just every time you can use a bit of a different, um, you can use a bit of a different, um, uh, yeah, different kind of uh, geometry. So it can be different curves, uh, different lines, and you can sort of quickly start to combine these to to create different different effects.
again, depends a bit on you, what do you think is sort of easiest? But this is for sure one, one way to create quickly uh, patterns. Um, okay, let me just actually save this again. And um, I wanted to show um, one more example, actually a few more. And then I will show you, or actually one more maybe, and then uh, and then we'll go a little bit on to 3D modeling. Um, actually, maybe I should hurry up to see. Okay, so let's let's do a new document. Uh, here also, I can just say save as. I will say copy objects randomly. Um, copy objects. Um, the objects not randomly, but uh, according to density, sort of. Okay, at least I lost the save. Just use this very, very, very cool name that I just made up of copy objects according to density. Save. <clears throat> okay, so let's say we want to uh, view. Uh, let's try to do this example because I didn't really test it before, so I'm just going to pull it out of my head a little bit. Let's say we draw a few curves. We want to have a little bit more control in um, sort of the density of elements. So hopefully this 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 will work. Okay, let's say we have uh, something like this. And now we want to sort of arrange the elements in between these two lines. Uh, so we can put in... so. If you remember, there's a function I've used before called tween curves. So I can select, I just say here in Rhino, tween curves, um, start end curve, and then I can choose the, some number between 10, press enter, and then I get sort of these basically uh, curves in between. Also, th those are like interpolated curves in between. I can change the number of steps. Um, I can do the same thing in Grasshopper. So again, you double click on the canvas, tween curves, and then there's what's this. Queen to uh, curves to twin from curves to twin two, and then this is a factor. What is this twin factor? Curve A, curve B. Um, yeah, I um, actually have to check exactly. Yeah, I have to see exactly how this works. So, uh, curve one, curve two. Right click, set one curve here, set one curve here. Let's see how that looks like. Okay, one in between, but I don't really know. Uh huh. Okay, yeah, actually, this might not work that well because we need to. Yeah, I, this I think I only, we only get, um, let's just see, I think we only get slider type floating point. Yeah, here we unfortunately only get. Uh, one in between, which is a bit kind of annoying, uh, but we can multiply this. Yeah, it's a bit inconvenient, but we can multiply this. There's a way called a series. So we can create a series of numbers. Uh, they're going to start from um, zero. And um, uh, just a minute, what is this? Uh, uh, this is a step number of values in the series. Okay, so from zero, this is a step. So maybe zero point one, and um, it's going to be hundred. So it's going to be maybe ten of these. Ten of these. I'll put it over here. And now we get a series of numbers. Okay, so we get the numbers uh, from zero to 0 0.9. And now in theory, this we can, so if this function takes in one number and gives us back a curve in between, then we can, if you give it 10 numbers, it will give us 10 curves, uh, each corresponding to this one number, let's say. Okay, yeah, it kind of works. It's a bit inconvenient that we have to do it like this, but so it is. Um, but now kind of we can choose, uh, we can change the start here. Um, we can change the step and then we can change the count or, but I obviously somehow cannot go over the, 
Okay, so we have a, a bit more controller. So again, uh, this is the, the start. So where do we start? Set at zero. This is the step size. So we can kind of have any steps. And this is the counter. So maybe we put to 50. And uh, we can get kind of very, very dense, dense curve. Actually, let's put here count just 10. And here step is, uh, well, whatever, uh, then 0 0.1, I guess. OK. Um, actually, here, maybe put to 11. OK. So we get these curves in between. Uh, that's actually 11 curves, same as this. And uh, yeah, let's try to do something similar to what we did before. So to, to, um, to arrange elements along these curves. <clears throat> so we can do, there's a function called divide curve, divide curve. Now I can put in this, this whole array of these three curves, put it on the curves. And now I have to change the number of segments. Also, there's another parameter called, actually, let me see. So there are different ways to do this. We can choose the number of segments, so maybe here, put 100. And um, by changing the number of numbers of segments here, I basically divide all of these curves in hundreds. Or, um, and yeah, maybe for our case, this is fine. Uh, yeah, maybe this is fine. Um, just thinking we can also divide it according to length. But here, the lengths of the curves, they don't really change that, that much. So maybe the effect will not be that, that big. Um, what was the other option? There was the other option called uh, here, curve, or actually vector grid, popular geometry. So if you remember, that one was uh, I put in curves here. And then I get a uh, number of points to add. OK, so here, with this popular geometry, I have a little bit more, um, I get kind of a random dis distribution. Or, uh, does that work? Yes. This is a seed, okay, 100 here. This is the seed of the random system, so I can kind of change that. So I can kind of change a little bit. So this gives me a little bit more random distribution, let's say. So maybe here we put 20 for each curve, and then I can change the sort of, I can shift them a bit around. So you can see that they're, uh, somehow some of them align in a weird way, but basically I can uh, I get a little bit more irregular uh, pattern. Let's actually increase here uh, 0 0.05, decrease here and here puts 21. Okay, uh, some of them align in a weird way, uh, but yeah, well, not exactly why that happens. Okay, some of them somehow weirdly align. Okay, but we now kind of got a bit different arrangement of, of points. Um, and they're sort of squeezed here. Also here we have a bit more a higher density. Here we have a bit kind of a less density, but somehow it, you, know, you would need to play a little bit with parameters to get, to get them sort of just look, look sort of nice. Uh, okay, but this is sort of already enough for us. And let's do the same thing before. So um, you know, maybe let's, in this case, um, Let's put like a small blade of grass that looks like kind of um, yeah, like this, uh, like this, and like this. Okay. Oh, actually, it's already smaller. Scale, just to make it a bit even smaller. Um, yeah. Okay. And um, let's put a point here. So we do exactly the same thing as before. So we'll kind of copy all the elements of the geometry. So we have move. Uh, we move all the this uh, some kind of curve, and we call it blade of grass. Right click set one curve. This one here. Uh, there's some kind of point. Uh, right click um, set one point. This one here. So point goes uh, actually. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is called some kind of origin. These names are not really important, but um, it's good to have names so that later, if you have a very long code, that you can kind of just 
know what's what's what so you don't have to check it all the time uh, vector between two points vector 2pt the first points are actually all the all the points here and the other point actually sorry the origin is the first point and all the points here you can also unitize it if you want but then their length is just one and then uh, this vector is going to move and we have we have basically it's the same situation as uh, as before i'll actually just turn off these yeah we have the same situation as before and let me just kind of quickly do that um take group yes it's like last up 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 okay so again let me actually just yeah uh, let's just do a little bit of doing kind of reshuffle the seed a bit uh, maybe change a bit the count um, uh, um scale and um, actually yeah, maybe increase the count um, here bake yes please group them select last and then move them in the same position okay yeah they somehow tend in this example they somehow tend to align a lot uh, so that's that's a bit annoying but uh, this would be a little bit uh, kind of again the way to go uh, let's just actually do um, let's do another example I just want to create uh, yeah just like a I just want to create a line goes like this later grass set one curve here origin set one point here now I have just these lines maybe I want to have like a lot of them so mm, 100 and um, yeah see that just kind of reshuffle it a bit and and um, so I have a pattern that looks a little bit like this here of course kind of uh, starts to align already right click bake group yes select last and then we go up 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 um somehow aha uh -huh, yeah they're, okay they're here but they somehow overlap yeah they overlap a lot with the other one so so they're kind of they're almost impossible to see okay that's a bit annoying but uh you'd have to kind of tinker a little bit well you would probably have to change mm -hmm. actually let me see select last okay so actually let's change the the step here yeah, that's actually what i could have done okay uh yeah let's i change now a little bit the uh, arrangement uh let's try again oh yeah no problem um i changed the the position of these original kind of twin twin curves uh between now we can go a little bit bake group okay it's like last up 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 okay now they're they at least don't overlap exactly with the previous curves at least they shouldn't so there might be a little bit of different places or so maybe that will give them a, a bit of a yeah okay um that's actually super quickly just do one last thing and um let me actually increase here um squeeze them even more and just decrease these ones even more perfect bake group okay so basically what i created here was is sort of a i created here in a way a custom patterning tool and then it's just about basically playing with um I have to play with um with like parameters and basically composing this custom pattern so you see now i kind of change a little bit the period can they uh, they somehow overlap well some well i i think this if i would play a little bit longer i might actually get this a bit better or so you can but you can already see that there's um again that there's somehow these areas here are denser so they're darker here they're a bit lighter and i can probably even 
play with this even further. Or so I just in an automatic way, I created a gradient in these um, uh, with these sort of lines. Or and then I can start layering these these effects to create really kind of a custom custom textures. That's kind of maybe the easiest way to work with custom textures that at least I know of, and at least that I work uh, that I use in my work. 